today we'll, we will cover how to use the simulate signal function block, how to use the filter sig signal function block, how to use the spectral function block to create FFT plots, and finally how to use the add subtract blocks for adding subtracting signals and the multiply and divide blocks work the same way as the add and subtract blocks so you'll know how to use those as well. And finally we'll create controls for the simulate signal, the filtering, so that you can control those in the front panel. So we'll go ahead and, and open up LabVIEW. And we're going to start with a blank VI, so I'm going to use a shortcut control N. And to insert a simulate signal function, you can right you right click on the block diagram, you go to express input simulate signal. When you put in a simulate signal, you can choose the type of signal shown here. You can choose a square, sine, triangle, sawtooth, or DC. You can choose the frequency, the phase, the offset, and the amplitude. You can also add noise, such as uniform white noise and some other noise types. You can play around with that, but at the moment we're not going to use it. Then you can choose your type of sampling. So you can, you can simulate acquisition timing. You can run as fast as possible. Then you can also choose how your time is going to be doing relative to start of measurement. If you do absolute date and time, then it will say the date and time at which you started and stopped. And then you can just leave the reset signal as use continuous generation and use signal type name. We can uncheck the signal type name and type the name that we would like to have. So I'm going to call it signal number one. Once you're done with that, you hit OK. And you notice that the output says signal number one. I'm going to create a graph by right clicking create graph indicator. And you notice that it created a graph on our front panel for that signal. And then I'm going to hit run. And you can see your signal there. Now it looks kind of choppy, so let's increase the samples per second. So I'm going to increase this to. 5,000 let's say, or well, let's increase it to 10,000. That way we know for sure we're satisfying the criteria of sampling greater than what we need to for the signal that we put in. And I just, I want to see this uh, signal in a better range, over a better range, so I'm going to, I'll turn off auto scaling, and since it's such a high frequency signal, 300 hertz, I'm going to try and change the range so I can see the signal itself. So point out to gives me a pretty good view of how the signal looks. Now I want to create controls for this simulate signal and I'm not going to expand it this time like I did previously. I'm just going to go to the little triangles. I'm going to create a control for offset. I'm going to create a control for frequency. Create a control for amplitude. And I'm going to create a control for phase. So now I can change the frequency, offset, and amplitude. So I'm going to change the offset to 0 0.5 and let's see what happens. And you notice that it shifted the whole thing up. So I'm going to go ahead and change it back to 0 and just hit run again. Now I want another signal because I would like to maybe add two signals together, subtract two signals together, etc. Now I can add in a second signal by right clicking and, and re-putting in the block and setting the settings or I can just highlight everything, do control C and then control V, so I'm going to copy and paste it, and I'm going to get a second signal. And then I can go in and rename my signal to signal number two. And then I can see on my front panel my second signal. I'm going to go ahead and relabel this to signal number two like the other one, so I can clearly see what's going on here. And I'm going, to re I'm going to move my controls to above my signal that it should be controlling. So the controls above signal 2 are the controls that go to con signal 2, and the controls above signal 1 are the controls that go to signal 1. And now I can change the frequency of signal 2 to, let's say, uh, 500 hertz, and then hit run. And you can see that we get both a signal with 300 hertz at one amplitude and a signal with 500 hertz at one amplitude. And we can change these respectively however we'd like. 
So now I'm going to add the two signals together. To do that, right click on the block diagram, go to Express, go to Express, Arithmetic and Comparison, Numeric, and Add. And I'm going to add the two signals together by selecting them and just connecting them to the block on the left. So you see here it says X, you see here it says Y, on the right you see X plus Y. So that's telling you how it's, uh, how it's resolving it and giving you the result out on this. And I'm going to create a graphic indicator. And I'm going to call this addition. And then say I want to subtract the signals too and display it at the same time so I know how to subtract them. I'm going to go ahead and right click, go back to the arithmetic and comparison, numeric, and subtraction. And I'm going to add a subtraction one in. And if you notice here it says x, y, x minus y. So it's going to take whatever's here at x and subtract out y and give you the result. So I'm going to create, I'm going to connect the x first, which I'll use a signal one. And then I'm going to connect the Y, which I'll use as signal 2. And I'm going to create a graph to graph it on. And I'm going to call it subtraction. And I'm going to move it so I can see it with the rest. And now I'm going to make my front panel large. And I'm going to hit Run and so I can see what I get. Now I can change these to see what I to see what else I get. Let's say if I make this 50 hertz instead of 500 hertz, what happens to the signal? And you can see. Now, say you're getting the signal right here, say the addition signal in, from your DAC, and you'd like to know what frequencies are present. You can do that by using a fast Fourier transform, and that'll tell you what frequencies at what amplitude is present. To do that, we go to our block diagram, right click on the block diagram, go to Express, Signal Analysis, and then spectoral, and we'll add that in. And when you insert it, this menu comes up. Now you leave all the settings on the bottom the same. The only thing you're going to change here is you're going to change R magnitude to peak. That way it is the proper amplitude. If you use RMS, it's off by a scaling factor. And we'll change decibels to frequency or linear so that you get the actual frequency in hertz. You hit OK. Then you connect your signal to what you'd like, so let's say the addition signal, and see what we get. And then you take your FFT peak, which is the output, right click, create, graph indicator. And I'm going to put this below the addition one. And we're going to call this addition FFT. And if we want to make one for subtraction, we can do what we did early, and that is select it, control C, control V, and paste it. I'm going to rename this to subtraction FFT and then connect it to the subtraction signal. And then if you go to your front panel, I'm going to go ahead and organize this so you can see that the left is addition, the right subtraction. And I'm going to hit run. And then you can see what frequencies are present. Now, on the uh, spectoral plot, it automatically will show you half the frequency uh, which you're sampling. So we're sampling at 10,000 hertz. So 10,000 divided by 2 is 5,000. So that means the maximum frequency in hertz will show is 5,000 due to the, the rule of you must at least sample twice at which the signal you're collecting. So I can turn off this auto scale for the x axis. And I'm going to change it to, let's say, we know our signals are. Uh, 350, but let's say let's turn it, let's do it down to 500, and we change this one to the same thing. And if I don't right click and turn off auto scale, it'll automatically go back to that 5000. I'm going to hit run again, and then you can see what's going on. Now, if I want to demonstrate noise cancellation, the two ways I can do it is by adding in a signal at the same frequency, the same amplitude, but a phase shift of 180. And I'll demonstrate that with this addition sign. And then I can also demonstrate signal cancellation using subtraction. So basically what I'm going to do is say that signal 1 is my original signal. Signal 2 is my noise signal. And I want to get only this original signal. So I'm going to demonstrate that by adding in a signal at the same frequency, at the same amplitude, in a phase shift, and then subtracting it out 
in the same phase, same frequency, and same amplitude to get the same result. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go back to my block diagram. I'm going to add in another simulate signal. And then I'm going to place it after the subtraction and addition block. So I'm going to subtract it out first from this top one, the addition block. So I'm going to add in an express numeric subtraction. And I'm going to put the subtraction here. And I'm going to connect the x to the first signal, the addition of the two signals. And then I'm going to create a numeric a graph for it. I'm going to say filtering using subtraction. And I'll also create an FFT plot for it, too. And I'm going to call this FFT plot subtraction. FFT, subtraction, filtering, FFT. And then I'm going to go back to the front panel. I'm going to organize it a little bit. And then move my controls for my subtraction signal to here. So here is where I'm going to control the filtering in a sense. And I want to filter out this signal number two. So I'm going to subtract it out in phase, so zero phase shift, same amplitude, same frequency. And I'm just going to hit run, but I can't because it says I have an error. And the error is a broken wire on this signal to uh, simulate number three. And I'm going to control B to get rid of it. Go back to the front panel using control E. And now I'm going to hit run. And you notice that now I see the same exact signal as signal number one using the filtering subtraction. And if you look at the FFT for it, you see that I only have the signal at 300. The signal that was at 50 is gone. So now I'm going to demonstrate the same thing by deleting the subtraction block here and adding an addition block. So I'll put in an addition block now. And I'm going to leave the names the same. Well, I should probably change them. I'm going to change it from subtraction to addition. And then I'm going to change this one from subtraction to addition. And go back to my front panel using Control E. And now add in, I'm going to add a frequency of 50 hertz at 1 amp, add a phase by 180, and hit Run. And you notice it does the same thing as subtracting out the signal at the same phase, same amplitude. Now, if I change the phase to 90 and I hit run, you notice that it's still there. If I put 0 and hit run, you notice it's there as well. And you can see that the amplitude doubled from the original. And that's because this frequency and my filtering frequency are adding with each other to double the amplitude. So I have to make sure that I add it out of phase by 180 to cancel the wave out. Now, there's one last way to do that, and that's by using the filtering block in the VI. And that is, you do this by right clicking on the block diagram, express signal analysis filter, and you can insert that. And what a low pass filter means is that anything below this cutoff frequency here will go through. High pass means anything above this cutoff frequency will go through. Band pass means anything between the low cutoff and the high cutoff will go through. Band stop means anything between the low cutoff and the high cutoff will not go through. It will filter it out. And then smoothing is kind of like an averaging function. A high pass filter because I want to cut off everything below this cutoff frequency. So I want to cut off at, say, like 150 and hit OK. And now I'm going to create a graphic indicator. And I'm going to put this to the addition signal. And I'm also going to put in an FFT for it so we see that it actually filters it. So I'm going to connect the FFT to the filtered signal. And I'm going to call this filter FFT. I'm going to go back to my front panel. And I'm going to move it around. I'm going to put the filtered FFT on the right here. 
next to all that. And then I'm going to put the filtered signal next to the filtering using subtraction. And I'm going to create a control for this cutoff frequency by going over here to lower cutoff, right clicking and creating control. Go back to my front panel using control E and I'm going to move that over to the filtered signal. So I'm going to hit run now. And now we can see using the filtering we get approximately one we still see our 300 megahertz but we still see a little bit of the 50 hertz so maybe we need to change our cutoff frequency to 250 let's say hit run and then we notice we get it even better but at the same time as we move the cutoff frequency lower cutoff frequency closer to the 300 we start seeing the amplitude goes down and the main reason the amplitude go down goes down is if you look at the FFT plot you see it's actually a range of frequencies that the 300 hertz is at. So if I make this lower limit 250 and make this upper limit 350, we can see that between 280 and 320, if we start cutting off those frequencies, we're going to decrease our amplitude. So maybe 250 is too high, so maybe try 225 and let's see what happens. We can see we're getting very, very close to that signal again. So this is how you use the filtering block, the spectral block to create an FFT the simulate signal blocks, add and subtract, multiply and divide, and uh, that is it. So if you want to save this, just hit save. I'm not going to save it, so I'm just going to close out, and then close out my lab view one last time, and that is it.